How can I describe one of my most anticipated movies of this year? Snowball, snow. I think Arthur's evolving. Slow kid. I feel a rant coming on. What's going on, everybody? It's Davey from the 80s, and you are now entering the Cinema Chop Shop. So park your ass right there. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the like, the share, and the subscribe button. Also, if you check the link below, you see a Patreon account. You click it, you become a member. All you got to do is try to recommend movies and music and trailers for me to react to. So click that damn Patreon link, homie, and help support the channel. Now, with that being said, we are here today. I finally went to go see this damn movie. Finally saw it. Green Knight. Now... I was really hyped about seeing this movie. I love the trailer. The trailer was awesome. And I was saying that if there was any movie that I felt like would blow me away in 2021, this would probably be it. But now, when I, like I said, even in a trailer reaction, I said this is A24. And since this is an A24 product, I know that A24 can be hit or they can be missed. With, uh, so... The way that it's looking like now is that A24 has way more misses than it does hits. And will this be another one added to his collection? You'll soon find out. Uh, this movie tells the tale of a King Arthur uh, fable um, of the Green Knight. And it's following this young man who basically there's some sort of witchcraft. And this green knight shows up, the, the, the dude, the little forest looking guy, he's a green knight, forest looking man, very symbolic by the way, we'll get into that later, uh, he shows up, he basically challenges King Arthur and his men and says, you know, one of you guys strike me down, but just know that once you strike me down, that I, in a year's past, I will come back and I will have, you'll have to come search me out and I'll have to deal the same blow that you dealt to me, All right? so you know, uh, Dave Patel's character, shout out to him, uh, amazing actor, he was from Slumdog Millionaires, he's also been in Hotel Mumbai, uh, this movie follows him solely, mostly throughout the whole damn movie, so, he steps up to the plate, he's King Arthur's, I think, nephew, uh, he strikes the Green Knight down, and then sets forth the path of, now, you know that you gotta find me, and all that good stuff, you know, set, setting forth the damn story, alright, now, here's the problem, that was probably about the most super interesting part about this movie. After that, this movie drags. And when I say it drags, I really mean this shit drags. Like, good lord. Um, I was watching it. it. This is one of those movies. This is one of those movies that's mostly a visual movie, right? You watch this movie for the art. You watch it for the cinematography. You watch it for the scenery and things like that. But outside of those things, this movie doesn't have much to offer you. Like dead ass serious you know and i'm gonna keep it a stack bundle right now shout out to my man r.i.p to the guy um this movie kind of disappointed me man uh when i saw that runtime of two hours all right i mean it's an a24 product so i already knew that the runtime was gonna be like about two hours uh but i was just like yo i hope this movie doesn't bore me right and the one thing about like, this movie's a slow burn. Everybody knows what a fucking slow burn is. I can deal with slow burns. A lot of people can't deal with slow burn movies. I can. Uh, but if you're going to give me a slow burn, burn movie, you have to make the payoff worth it. That's what the fuck was wrong with The Witch. The Witch was a slow burn. That payoff was garbage. Midsummer was just stupid all the way through. Uh, Hereditary, I actually enjoyed. Now, that's the problem with a lot of these independent movies. They focus a lot on the art. They focus a lot on the scenery. But it's like, was that ending worth it? The ending was cool. I like the ending, but at the same time, uh, which I'll probably go into an explanation about at the end of this video, but I mean, at the end of the day, like it just didn't, it didn't do anything for me. There's a lot of fat in this movie that you really felt like you could have cut out. Like the opening scene sets the fucking mood for everything. You first have this gorgeous opening scene where my man's standing in front of the screen and you know, he has the crown and the catches on fire and stuff like that. Very, very cinematic very like eye-catching very dope like image like that's poster worthy you get what i'm saying like it's very very eye catch is eye candy you know but then once you get past that it's a fucking literally like a two-minute segment of fucking ducks and goats fighting and i'm like why am i looking at this stupid duck and goat fighting for like two minutes like we're focusing on this way too long 
The movie also has random cuts throughout the film. Like, you're watching it cut, random cut, 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 cut. And I get it, it's supposed to be um, introducing you to other people's POV, but at the same time, it gets kind of like, it kind of pollutes the shot. You get what I'm saying? You have this beautiful fucking shot, and all of a sudden, it's just like, cut, 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 cut. And you're just like, well, you know, you, you kind of feel kind of like, what the fuck was that about? And then on top of that, that ending felt so rushed. Like, once I got to the end of the movie, it really felt like it was like, all right, so uh, how the fuck are we in this movie? Uh, I think this will be tight. Yo, that's too long. Right? That's like a whole nother hour. That's like a whole nother hour. We have to find a way to cram this fucking hour's worth of material into about five minutes. Because I literally was like, when I saw the ending happen, I was like, how are you? I was like, okay, you're starting something new. I was like, are we about to start all over again? I had to honestly have to check the time. Like, yo, uh, how much time we got left here? Because I don't remember this movie saying it was going to be three hours because we're about to hit the two-hour mark right now. So I was like, it's five minutes left. Like, what the fuck is going to happen, you know? And it literally felt like a sprint to the finish line. But once you find out why it was doing that, then you're like, okay, I kind of understand. But at the same time, it's still like the payoff was not worth it, you know? Overall, like I said, this movie is very, very, um, it's cinematic, man. Like, it's beautiful. It's something that if you were to go catch in, like, Dolby or IMAX or something like that, you're going to really, really love the colors, the, the cinematography and everything like that. All of that shit pops. The soundtrack, the score. The score is freaking amazing, too, by the way. I love the fucking score. The score was very, very amazing. But it's just, like, A24 has this problem where it's like they focus too much on the art aspect, and it's like they, they forget how to fucking tell a cohesive story. You ha In order for people to enjoy your movies, you're going to have to learn how to tell a story. This movie told the story, but it was like with such big-ass gaps in between, and then on top of that, it was just so much things where I'm like, what was the purpose of that? Like, there's like little side missions or little, uh, little random segments of the movie where you're just like, okay, literally, what was the purpose of this? When you watch shit like Lord of the Rings... All those little side missions and the side conquests that they go to, it has a fucking purpose. There's a purpose behind that shit. There's always something going on. These missions, when they go off on a, off on like a tangent or go off to the side, literally has nothing to do with nothing. You know what I mean? Like it has nothing to do with the storyline. It offers absolutely zero, zero substance to the story. If you cut it out and then you just go from the beginning to the end, you're not missing anything. This is sadly like, okay. In the middle of the movie, I was like, yo, I, I, I got to walk away to get some snack on, right? And I was so afraid to walk away, and I was just like, I hope... And I was, I was so afraid to walk away because I was like, yo, like, you know, will I miss anything, you know? Sad to say, I didn't miss shit. This is one of those movies where you can literally take a snack break. You could take a good snack break, by the way. You could probably even go take a shit, a real long, good shit, bro, and come back and still have missed absolutely nothing. Like... Shit that seems important isn't important, and that's horrible, horrible when it comes to story-wise, you know? Like, the one complaint I said I, I've, I've heard about this movie the most is that it's slow. Nah, it's being slow is just the, the tipping point, bro. You have this boring-ass story, you know, you have these, you have, <sighs> where do I begin, man? Where do I begin? It's just so much wrong with this film. And this movie could have been really fucking good. Because the cast is amazing. The dude that plays uh, Green Knight, uh, what's his fucking name? Uh, Ralph Ennison. Dude, amazing actor. Wasted. You know what I mean? And I, I really wish I would have got more interaction. Even though they're basing it off the story or the poem or whatever the case may be. I really wish we would have got more interaction between the Green Knight. The Green Knight was dope. I liked him. He was really, really cool. Uh, he looked cool. He sounded cool. The man carried himself in a dope-ass way. You know, it was he was an interesting character. But it's like, outside of that, you don't have much to offer from this movie. There's not much to offer. Like, I honestly felt like I wasted two hours of my life, and I was afraid of that, that I was going to watch this movie and feel like I wasted my fucking time. And that's the one thing that I didn't want to feel, especially with a movie where I was kind of hyped up to see it, where I was like, yo, this might be the movie of the year. And it just let me down, dude. It really just let me down, like, I, like horribly. So... Um, let me go ahead and give you my grade, then I'm going to break it to a segment where I feel like I'm going to explain the ending as best as I can. Here on the Cinema Chop Shop, we grade movies in three ways, count in three ways. Either you get bodied and sent to the bowels of hell, you get a big fat meh, 
meaning your movie was mid 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 range, mid grade, Massimentos, meh, you know, all that good shit, mediocre. Uh, and then you you could get spared, which means you know your movie's dope. I would recommend it. I'll tell your mama's mama to watch it and all, all that other good shit, you know. But I'm gonna have to fucking body this movie. Yeah, you heard it, folks. I had to body this movie. And I'm sorry, and I, I apologize. Uh, this movie had good things going for it. A great cast. It had interesting dialogue in some areas. Uh, it had great cinematography, dope-ass music. It had all the building blocks to be great. But that pacing was terrible. Like, really, really, really basura, homie. You get what I'm saying? So... Now, I'm about to go into a, a section of this where I explain the ending to the best of my ability, right? So, if you have not seen the movie, go ahead and dip out. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Adios, you know, all that good shit. But it, let's go ahead and talk about this ending. So, I'm assuming you're gone. In the end of the movie, we see uh, Dave Patel's character. Um, I don't even know how to fucking pronounce his real name, his name in the movie. So, I'm just Dave Patel. We see his character, um, basically, he runs away from the Green Knight, books at home, bro, busts a straight bitch move, runs. He <laughs> comes back home, he gets knighted, uh, fucking King Arthur dies, he takes the crown, he becomes king, uh, he goes with his little brothel chick, you know, his little hooker, has a kid with her, ends up taking a baby, throws her a couple shillings and shit, <clears throat> and then takes the baby and shit. So then he ends up, uh, you know, marrying someone of higher value, like some sort of noble woman or some shit. Um, and then he ends up going off to war, and he brings his son along. His son ends up dying from war. Uh, this dude's basically like, and this is the part where I was talking about where the fucking pacing was like, yo, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, it, it felt like it was just like, ah, this happens, and then this happens, and this happens, and this happens. And you're just like, yo, everything's going crazy. Um, basically, from like that point out, his whole fucking life falls apart, and like his castle gets under stage and people are trying to storm the castle and then like he's he was given his belt I, i'm assuming by uh i think it was his mom he was given his the belt by the mom that basically will protect him and as long as he's wearing his belt no harm will come to him right and he takes the belt off in the in his little vision or whatever he takes it off and his head falls off and then he finds out that he's still here with the fucking green knight waiting to get beheaded and um, so I guess this is some, this is basically him looking into the future and seeing what's on the other side of the fence. If I were to leave right now, this is what will possibly happen. Uh, and in order to basically spare his kingdom, the despair of having a horrible fucking king and losing his fucking son and going through all that pain and suffering uh, and basically hurting all the people around him because his baby mom's the hooker. She gets hurt. She gets her son taken away from her. Uh, his, he loses a son. Um, his fucking kingdom hates him. They be throwing tomatoes at him and shit. It's just, it's just all bad, like all bad for him. So instead of going through all that shit, he just says, "Fuck it," you know. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just go ahead and accept my fate. Uh, to me, it was kind of like, you know, you were marked, you were kind of marked. It, I felt like the Green Knight Loki kind of like would have put a curse on him because it's no way in hell like all that bad shit would have just happened. But you know, and I digress. Like it seemed like that man had a black cloud hanging over his head if that was really his future. So he ends up taking the sash off and allowing the Green Knight to cut his head off, uh, basically uh, being like metaphoric and symbolic for him accepting his fate and basically doing what's good for the betterment of the people, you know. And that was the whole idea of, I guess, like, you know, King Arthur's men, noble men and how noble they really are and shit like that. Uh, would they do something for um, to, to really help other people or are they just like kind of self-centered and shit, you know? Are they really practicing what they preach in a way, you know? So this was a test for one of his noblemen. The nobleman obviously passed because he wasn't a coward. Uh, he accepted his fate, and he accepted the fact that uh, the world would probably be a lot better without him, you know? Um, another thing, too, a symbolic thing was that I felt like the obviously the king, King Arthur's men, uh, they represented Christianity, the, uh, the religious faith. 
all the crowns had the, the sun behind them. You know, I felt like that was very symbolic for Christianity. Uh, and the Green Knight was like, he, he was basically a symbolism for paganism, right? You know, because, I mean, think about it. There was even that nice little dialogue scene about uh, why is the Green Knight green? And they start talking about the earth and things like that. Uh, you know, those are like kind of like paganist ideas, you know, uh, the old versus the new, you know, world. Uh, so he, he was very, like me to me. That's what it was symbolic of. And that's just that's just my opinion. I mean, I don't know if that's what it is, but I think that that's that's what I got from it. Um, also, there's if you stayed all the way to the end, most likely most people didn't. But there's like this small cut scene where this uh, little girl is like in a room and she walks up and picks up the crown. Uh, and she puts it on. I have no clue who the fuck this little girl is. Uh, I don't know what the fuck that represents. It was just random. It honestly felt like they just had some little random kid on the set playing around and they just recorded her. And, and she put on a crown and they were like, oh, that was cute. We should put that at the end of the movie. That's what it low-key felt like. But that's just me, though. Um, but like I said, man, overall, it was really disappointing. Like, when you're watching a scene, right, and the people that Jack. Uh, I'm just going, you know, I'm just having like spoiler thoughts right now. The kids that jacked um, him for the fucking, for the axe, right? So did that ghost like get his fucking axe back? Like, you know, like what the fuck happened with that? Because, you know, um, they took his damn axe, took off on the, on the thing. He's like, I'm going to, I'm going to finish a conquest for you. You know, he fucking takes off on the horse. Ah, bitch. You know, and all of a sudden this man gives the, the, the ghost back her head. And all of a sudden he wakes up, his fucking axe is right there. Okay, whatever, you know? And it's crazy because it was like, he also saw, I ain't gonna lie, this whole time I thought he was just tied up still in the forest dead. Like, that's what I thought would happen. The whole time, once I saw the, the, the scene where he was tied up, before I even saw like the whole skeleton thing, I was just like, yo, this better not be some stupid ass fucking dream that he had, that he finished a conquest and this motherfucker just died randomly in the forest like a day after he took off from like, you know, uh, freaking King Arthur's fucking town and shit. That shit will suck. Like, that would be a whack-ass movie. But luckily, they didn't go that route. Or did they? You know, um... Where was I at? Uh, that part was stupid. Uh, I guess, what, the ghost got his fucking axe back? And then the whole fucking random thing where he, like, ended up in the house with that lady. And then she wanted to prove that he wasn't a knight or whatever. And she fucking gave him a hand job. Like, that shit was just random. And then he got kissed by, like, the fucking king. And then they gave him the fox back. And I'm like, yo, I thought the fox... I didn't even know, like... Like, man, dude, I really thought the Fox was going to be, like, a central focus, low-key, like, of this shit. Like, I thought he was going to be, like, one of those, like, you know, like, I thought he was going to really be giving him game, like, throughout the whole movie. I thought he was going to be always talking. So, random, just randomly, <coughs> like, sound like that smoker lady with a fucking hole in her throat. Just randomly just start talking, and he's like, oh, is this some sort of witchcraft? What the fuck? Bro, this, this Fox been following you for, like, forever. You done seen giants and shit. And you over here talking about, let me get a ride. You seen all this crazy shit. This motherfucking tree has been talking and telling you that it's gonna cut your head off, and you and you're tripping and you're surprised by a fucking fox talking. That shit made no fucking sense. The the fox talks, bro. I don't know. And if you were looking at a fucking land of giants, you know what I'm saying? This fucking tree just walked in the hell. You decapitated this t this tree, man, man. You killed Groot. This motherfucker took his picked his head up and rah, 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 rode off, laughing and shit, cackling. And you're questioning th this fox talking. Stupidest shit ever. Um, like I said, but it was like, you could have got rid of that. You could have got rid of the freaking head scene. You could have got rid of the other scene. And it was like, it wouldn't have meant nothing. Like, you literally, I could have fell asleep during this movie and woke up and still figured it out. You get what I'm saying? This is one of those movies where it had a hard time keeping my attention because everything felt like it wasn't leading nowhere. Like, I was like, okay, so... You know, he went to go see that chick so he could get his axe back tight. And I was just like, but how did she get his axe back? Whatever. You know, and then he goes to the other saying, oh, you have a couple of days until Christmas. You know, you can hang out here. Okay, what's the, what was the fucking purpose of this scene? Like, what was the purpose of this scene? What was the purpose of seeing the fucking giants? What was the purpose of seeing any of this shit? Like, it was just, I don't, man, I don't know, man. I don't know. They, they wasted a fucking huge opportunity in order to do something dope. So, I'm going to just stop it here. So, that's my review. Let me know if you agree or disagree, whatever the case may be. Drop it in the comment section down below. And you are now exiting the cinema chop shop. I hope you guys are having a magnificent day. And adios, homies.